Right, and you're doing that. I can't do all teaching. I can't do all teaching. It's called retiredness. <laughs> yes, retired. Carries okay. just like from, the from street. Northeast Middle. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Miss Rellis. Yeah. No, I had to get some some little clues going. Oh, yeah. I just finished like, like, I touched them up. So now what? I have to go to my third year. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. Okay, and I'm a videographer and a documentarian, and I've known Kwame probably for well over a decade. Mm. Yeah. Fifteen years, probably. Wow. And Dean's also working on low power FM. Development yes. In Baltimore City. A community-oriented yeah. local uh, Fantastic. low power. Hi, my name is Raquel. I'm a mother of five. I'm also a five. Five. massage we? therapist. All right, mother of five. <laughs> I need your call. You got a card? I don't, but I'll write my name and number down okay. for you. Okay. 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 kind of wedding but it was so beautiful and I mean it was beautiful yeah. absolutely beautiful and um, I'm a retired Baltimore City school teacher oh, and I just met her I, she taught at the school where I was at and I haven't seen her I was at yeah from Northeast Middle Dunbar Middle oh and I used to Teach at uh, Thomas G. Hayes Elementary. When That's I where started. I know you from. Mm -hmm. Thomas G. Hayes. Yeah. The right. Continues. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's reunion. Yeah. And for those who may not know, her son is Brother Jabari. How do you say that? Natura. Natura. Oh, right. the one that has a church on the corner of North Avenue. No, no. he has the shop. It used to be on oh, okay. on right. Twenty Street, but it's on. St. Paul now. Right. He brings uh, conscious black speakers to Baltimore. Yes. Yeah. Oh, part wow. of something. That's awesome. Right. Just about to take ready last week. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. In fact, they're doing something at, uh, at uh, Everlasting Life, aren't they? Isn't there an event they're doing? They, they, they were doing something because of the kale chips. They do kale chips. Right. They have a group of children that sing called Watotos from now. Are you familiar with them, Watotos? Yeah. Oh, I know them. Oh, yeah, I know. One of the festivals. I don't know where we have to Yeah. Are you doing Peggy Jackson? Yes. That's why. Okay. Um, and my name is Charles. Okay. Um, Chuck is my good friend, Dr. Abiyomi Paulden. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing this gentleman since I was 21 years old, where we crossed paths with a program that brought me to UNT United Methodist Church to be a part of the program. This is nephew. <laughs> <laughs> that is See, yes. yeah. And um, I've, had, I've been blessed tremendously through the, the acquaintanceship, the friendship, and the wonderful advice and conversation I've had with him, and it was a, a blessing and honor to be here to be a part of this. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 I know it's going to be a little bit of a Okay, I'm yeah. Tolu and Tolu. Yes. It's a Misha Tolu, so it is from Tolu. And I'm the Telhala Nettie. Oh, okay. Well, I do prison ministry. Oh. I advocate for prison serving life sentences with the possibility of parole. Mm -hmm. And by my name, came came to Annapolis and spoke mm -hmm. on our behalf and stayed as long as he could. And when he continued in the work, allowed us to use the church and mm -hmm. to hold meetings and events. And we truly been a blessing. Because oh. now we have like 85, it might be 90 men now in one home and that been home. Yes, yes. And August the 22nd at Trail Park, we had our annual picnic. And so you can come and see some of the people from the old Oh, my goodness, yeah. Yes. I, I was at a couple of hearings a, few, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. One for uh, Kareem and for Eddie. No, I didn't get to the one for Eddie, but they scheduled it. Yeah. Okay. But uh, wonderful. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And she's from Unity. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Kathleen Carrier, lifelong member of Unity United Methodist Church, and I met Dr. Abiyomi when he was Dr. Henry. Name sermon in Africa we went to, and that's right. Wow. We've been together a long time. He was my daughter, which is still a book. We get to my brother, but he was there. In all of our trials. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Her oh. brother, by the way, is Michael Carter. Many of you may remember him too. Uh, yeah, he, his last position was in Baltimore City Public Schools. Mm -hmm. 
Rodriguez. I met uh, Dr. Aviomi as Dr. Norman Handy, actually Councilman Handy, mm -hmm. when I handled Hispanic Affairs for Coach Mook many, many months ago. And when I became Executive Director of a Community Services Center, I had an interdenominational blessing and I was blessed to, um, and honored to have um, Dr. Aviomi um, as part of that blessing. And I just always loved his support and his openness to, to diverse um, cultures and people, and I am truly honored to see you after. It's been so long. I'm, I'm just honored and tickled to see you. It's happened. It's happened. And your brother? Yeah, um, my name is Paul Rodriguez. Um, my sister is Heidi. <laughs> she <laughs> thankfully brought me here, and I'm very glad to be here today. Um, I'm going to be a third year law student at the University of Baltimore. Um, and uh, really inspired to see the work that Dr. Obiomi's done, and hopefully, follow some of those footsteps one day. Because so. he said he was in, my father asked him what he was interested in. He said uh, he, he wanted to focus on real estate. And I said, oh, you want to get rich? And he said, oh, no. And he says, I got another trick up my sleeve. <laughs> you, you were talking about uh, the need for uh, the space as opposed to the profit mode, uh, looking at the whole nonprofit area as a way of developing housing and space for people. Yeah. I think especially in Baltimore City, there's a lot of potential <laughs> in this city yeah. because of the people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it has to get taps. That's it. <laughs> That's what, it's as simple as that, I think. Right. You know, right. But it gets complicated along the way sometimes. True. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And uh, I, 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 I too thank all of you for coming. Uh, I, I'm sorry to say we, we've been through the elaborate process of printing programs and everything, and I left them right in the living room of the, of the house as I walked out the door. But uh, I, I guess, let, let me just do this. Let, can I just read something from the book? Uh, uh, Sister Kathleen mentioned that the only eulogy in the book is the one for her daughter, Kim mm -hmm. And uh, there were... Um, a variety of messages, uh, types of messages and uh, audiences that, I, that, that these sermons uh, were addressed to. But the majority of them were spoken, preached at Unity United Methodist Church. With the exception of a couple that we call homilies. Uh, a homily, you know, is a short message and doesn't necessarily have to mention God or be religious in content. Uh, but on page 100, there is one such homily. It's called All That Jazz. And I particularly like this message because it is, it's non-religious in terms of, it's not a message to invite you to become a part of the church or to believe in Christ necessarily. But it's about the relationship between John Coltrane and jazz and Jesus Christ and religion. Um, it was preached at St. James Episcopal Church on February 6, 2000. Father Michael Curry was the rector there. And the musical guests were two of my favorite jazz artists, Houston Persons and Etta Jones. So here, here's the, the homily. In his book, The Luminous Darkness, Dr. Howard Thurman, that great black spiritualist, describes the route a deep sea diver takes as being, quote, a passage through the belt of fishes, end of quote. This is a wide band of light under the water which emanates from the light above the water. From there, Thurman says, quote, he moves to a depth of water that cannot be penetrated by surface light. It is dark, foreboding, and eerie. The diver's immediate reaction is usually one of sudden fear and sometimes even panic. That soon passes, for as he descends deeper and deeper into the abyss, his eyes slowly pick up the luminous quality of the darkness, and he descends to his, de his destined depth with confidence, using peculiar vision only the darkness provides. In like manner, when one begins to plumb the depths of jazz, the only true American art form, 
one must move beyond the surface of this genre of music and broach its deep dark depths with no more light than God provides anyone who searches the mysteries of life. And like the deep sea diver looking for buried treasure, the one who searches for the meaning and the message in jazz must dare go where none else but the spirit can go. For like God and creation, jazz is a spiritual experience, and what we say God is to religion, jazz is to music. Take a journey with me through the hallowed names of this mind-boggling entity we call jazz. I begin with none other than the inimitable John Coltrane and the beautiful and melodious renditions he recorded of the Broadway tunes and the sumptuous ballads he delivered on songs like After the Rain or Aisha. Of course, the sweet sounds of Nancy Wilson or the stylish scats of the woman Dean Crosby and Frank Sinatra called the greatest Ella Fitzgerald. Among the hallowed halls of this legacy we find persons like Nina Simone with her super sultry self, or Eric Dolphy, Eric Dolphy, who composed so many original tunes as an expatriate from America. Then there's Miles, yes Miles, and Miles, and more Miles, of Miles, <laughs> and those blue no boys who accompanied him, Red Garland, Tony Williams, and others. The likes of Quentin Warren, Jimmy Smith, King Pleasure, James Moody, Thelonious Monk, Grant Green, Sassy Sarah Vaughan, and the vocalizations of Queen Donna Washington. Nobody did it better than Baltimore's own Billy, Lady Day Holiday. <laughs> and nobody calypso us more than Stan Getz with Girl from Ipanema. I recently heard Charles Lloyd on a reissue of, quote, Memphis Dudes Again, that knocked my socks off. And let me hear them mention the legacy of my own family tree, the Handies, back where my name was, from W.C. to John, which populate the halls and walls of our minds and our memories. There are classic songs like Moody's Mood for Love or St. James and Infirmary, no pun intended, Father Curry. Songs recorded and released by the likes of Amosos Leontopoulos Thomas to Bobby Blue Bland. Uh, there are the syncopating riffs of big bands like Fletcher Henderson, Chick Webb, and Cab Calloway, contrasted to the acoustic trios of a balladeer like Nakeen Cole or the smooth sounds of Jimmy McGriff. Who didn't or doesn't have a copy of Dakota Staten, not Station, mind you, singing, it started at the late, 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 late show in their collection? Who doesn't recognize in groups like Take Six the origins of close harmony and scat-like swing, born in the music of Lambert, Hendrix, and Ross? No discussion of jazz would be right without hearing the name Louis Satchmo Armstrong in the verbiage. No library is considered complete without a copy of Don't Go to Strangers by our guest musicologist Etta Jones and Houston Person. But let me go beyond simply category, categorizing its styles and cata cataloging and chronicling its contributors. As every schoolboy or girl knows, jazz is much deeper. So let me get beyond name calling or what Howard Thurman described as the level where surface light shines on our inquiry and plumb the deeper depths of jazz. Jazz is worship. It is a prayer from the soul of a people who have longed to be free in substance and style. Just as the Psalms are Israel's songbook, so the music of jazz is the effort by Americans of African descent to tell their story and sing their song in a strange land. It is our God-given talent, rehearsed and resourced through the dark nights of the soul, where the whip of slavery was heard, and the suffering and the rape and torture and the mutilation of our people by slave owners and slave traders was felt. That's what jazz is. Jazz is the felt and focused fusion of the fact that our families and our folkways were stripped and separated from us, and the sad and criminal reality that we were led along a pathway of pain and pathos, 
until we arrived at a place for which James Weldon Johnson said, Our Father's Only Side. Jazz music is our expression of the cruel and callous reality that even after freedom was gained, that same pain and pathos was indelibly stamped in the DNA and genes which comprise and confound who we are. Jazz is the strange fruit immortalized by Billy Lady Day Holiday. This fruit grew from the waves of lynching, murder, and oppression started by some hooded cowards known as the Ku Klux Klan on Lookout Mountain, Tennessee in 1895. This fruit continues to grow from the current wave of terrorism and violence being perpetrated by contemporary cowards against black churches in the South today. Jazz is the musical paraclete, that holy sound which accompanied the rise and revival of the artistic and intellectual genius of the likes of James Baldwin and Langston Hughes and Gene Toomer and Paul Lawrence Dunbar and County Cullen and Zora Neale Hurston, that group of Harlem New York ace buddies who put words to the feelings of our people during the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. Jazz is the rhythms, polyrhythms, and cross rhythms, the recurring lines and fixed refrains, the spontaneous creations and improvisations, the syncopation and the beat, the antiphonal and the pentatonic sounds of the history of our people. This sound was pushed out with all the heart, mind, soul, and strength those artists could muster until that strange sound that no one could define, delineate, or denigrate was heard from the fingers, lips, and vocal cords of a people who had something to say about life and about living. Somebody said, the music goes round and round and it comes out here. We call that jazz. Yes, this is our story. This is our song. It is just another way of praising our God all the day long. Yes, jazz is our people's way of praising God in days when hope unborn had died, in days when we stood on the mountain so bright, in days when we walked through the darkest of nights where it seemed it was always 3 o'clock in the morning and the sun was never going to shine in our back door again, through days when we worked from can't see to can see, through days when we had to sing, sometimes I feel like a motherless child a long way from home. Through days when we marched for what we only felt in our hearts and only heard in our hearing, that strange sound of freedom. Yes, jazz is music which documents the reality there's something inside of us so strong. Dogs couldn't bite out. Water hoses couldn't wash out. Bull collars and Lester Maddox couldn't beat out. Cattle prods couldn't shock out, and Jim Crow laws, black codes, and separate but equal couldn't legislate out. Mm -hmm. I hope you're still with me on this flight of consecrated imagination. Jazz is the call and response from the depths of a people who, because they are kissed by the sun, suffer the most brutal and dehumanizing form of slavery for over 247 years, saying, with every fiber and ounce of being, they could muster, look what the Lord has done in us, through us, and in some cases, in spite of us. He took our blues notes, our field hollers, our chain gang chants, our juke joint jumping, and our slave utterances. He even took our spirituals, our songs of faith, and the meted music of Isaac Watts, and those Euro-American hymns we put a beat to. He took the music of Wesley and Sankey and the gospel music of hard times and cross-filtered it with the secular sound of classical notation and swing rhythms and gave the, us these marvelous, matchless, mysterious, but masterful machinations you and I know as jazz. Don't think for one moment Christ was engaging in mere, mere Aramaic chit-chat when he said, Greater things than these shall ye do. Jazz is our witness to God of the truth of these words. If by chance there is somebody under the sound of my voice who says in their heart of hearts, Yeah, Harlem Park preacher, but I can't understand those strange improvisational sounds and 
thrombotic dives into the depths of my psyche as found in some of the music and musings of folk like Sun Ra or Archie Shepp or Pharaoh Saunders or Alice Coltrane's journey into Sacha Dananda or Rashan Roland Kirk's bright moments or the nonsense notations called Sket of an Ella Fitzgerald or Sarah Vaughan. Is there anyone who feels that way? If so, take a look at our history. When brought here as slaves, the plantation owners separated us according to our languages and dialects to prevent us from being able to communicate one with another. So they thought. <laughs> but we communicated in the moans, the chants, and the nonsense language of trying to get the message of hope and help to one another. Though they stamped out our lyrics, we improvised and stylized the language of our enslavers to fit our needs. The same thing is happening in jazz today. We are still improvising. We are still taking what the world gives us and making it suit and serve the pathos and ethos of our ethnicity and culture. Through this idiom and genre of music we call jazz, we are still turning our stumbling blocks into stepping stones, still turning our dark nights into bright sunrises, still trying to make a hundred cause ninety-nine and a half just won't do. Jazz is our performance and our perspective of protest and praise that we believe there's a God somewhere who has heard our cry and pitied every groan. Jazz music is our attempt to tell the world we've come too far, bled too much, prayed too hard, died too soon, been fired too fast, been denied for too long, and been loved too little, and we ain't gonna let nobody and nothing, nothing stop us from reaching our goal. And if you cannot hear it in the lyrics of the vocalist, just listen to the melody, the mystery, and the mastery of the music, and of the instruments by the musician. Because what we think of our God, what we think of ourselves, and what we think of our fellow human beings is in their shining in all that jazz. And I, um, again, the program that we left home included the time when we could just have a discussion if you had any questions about... <laughs> Hey, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I made it. Uh, you know I wasn't going to miss it. Yeah, yeah, good to see you all too. Um, if you had any questions and uh, any Q&A, so to speak, uh, about the book or about the writing of it, you know, we, we can do that now. Um, I'll start it off by saying uh, it, it, it took me about three years to 